Brian's going to be going over something really awesome today, specifically uh, Inventor Sheet Metal. So we've done Inventor Sheet Metal in the past before, uh, generally how to utilize the functionality within the software, and a lot of our customers use it on a daily basis. Now, when using Sheet Metal, there's a lot of intricacies um, with how Sheet Metal interprets uh, things like bends, cuts, and things along that nature. And people always ask us questions. How do I do this complex thing? How do I flatten this complex part, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's kind of what we're here for today. Um, it was suggested by someone before that, hey, can you guys go over some of these complex sheet metal things? And Brian's like, boom, I'll do that. And uh, that's kind of why we're here today. Brian, do you have anything else to add before we get started? Nope, that about covers it. Absolutely. So if anyone has any questions at all during this, um, go ahead and type them into the questions panel and we'll go ahead and answer those during the dedicated Q&A session at the end of all this. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and give it over to Brian and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of Energy Metal. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. All right, just like Nigel said, uh, purpose was because this was requested by multiple customers actually, um, especially when we started bringing it up, uh, everyone was wanted to see their uh, sheet metal issue be resolved, that they wanted to see how a workaround can be used for their sheet metal part. Uh, so today we'll be going into the different approaches that we would take into some of these issues that you guys are running into, such as creating joggle, joggles, uh, flange, compound angles, and other things like that. Um, we'll be going into maybe different tools that you wouldn't expect to be using when going into sheet metal directly, unless you, unless you already are using this, but things like the surface, some surfacing tools, uh, measuring tools, and other of those commands. Um, there's even direct edit modeling, which I actually try to stay away from a little bit, uh, and you'll see why here in a bit. Um, but there, there are other tools you can use inside a 3D modeling environment that can help cater to your sheet metal designs. So we're gonna go over four examples today. The first one uh, is something, if you've seen the last ABA, it's something similar to that. It's connecting multi-body assemblies. Uh, some of our customers are, are tasked with creating the sheet metal um, parts that are, that are connecting the, the multi-body assemblies that they're receiving from, their, uh, from the other parts of their team. Uh, so we'll be going over to the best approach to that. Um, creating joggles or a, a deformation in the sheet metal uh, on the right hand side. So the, this is a, a kind of feature inside of, it's not a, it's not a command per se, but it's a, something you see in sheet metal where you have two, two sheet metal um, cases on the same plane. Um, you want to have them overlap in the sense of a one going under the other. So you can do a spot weld or, or a bolted uh, like connecting them via bolts and nuts, for example, like with those holes. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be uh, showing how to create that kind of divot into the, the sheet metal or the, the bend um, so you can connect the two accordingly. And then the last two examples we have also from our customers uh, request is um, creating flanges on a compounded angles. Um, compounded being not only just one angle of a flange, but there's gonna be two angles at one time. So we'll be creating, and that'll be represented there on the left-hand side. Um, so it's a little bit, a little bit trickier to create that, but we'll, we'll be going into the steps of how, how I go about doing so. And then lastly, reverse engineering apart. Now this was a newer one to us uh, where we would have to take our, our customers getting 3D model parts, uh, kind of like the ones, or 3D solid parts, kind of like the ones you see at the top right-hand corner of the screen there. And they have to, reverse engineer that. They're, they're tasked with creating the sheet metal representation or, or component of that part. And it's the ones they're getting, it's actually very similar to, to that model that we have at the top right there. Um, so we, we found a workaround or, uh, or a way to go about it, a workflow um, that you can use to, to apply to your own sheet metal parts. And instead of, you would you would think you'd typically have to shell it and things like that, we'll, we'll go through a way where you, you might not need a shell. Shelling can, it is good in the 3D modeling world, 3D solid world, but uh, for sheet metal, it might not give you the, the, the best uh, corners or, or angles or things like that that you might expect. So uh, we'll go ahead and dive into it. Again, a reminder, if you have any questions or if you have anything you wanna 
see maybe in a maybe a third sheet metal ABA because uh, I I know there's still some that people are requesting to see. I couldn't fit it all in all in one here, but um, we can definitely make another one later down the line if if you uh, have some of your own workflows that you want to see. All right, so now I'm sharing my inventor screen here. So for the first example, like I mentioned, it's the multi-body assembly. We want to connect uh, this front part here with these holes to these the back part here. Um, so what we can do is we can go ahead and create a new component here. I have a, some automatic numbering scheme there. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my first sketch on this face over here. And what I'm going to do is kind of reference the I'm going to hide this uh, plane first, but I'm going to reference the geometry that already exists uh, in, in our components here so we can connect them accordingly. So what, how we're going to do that is by going to project geometry. Then I'm going to hover over the, the, uh, the body there. And if you leave your, actually, if you leave your mouse uh, over it long enough, it's going to give you this list of different um, parts of the or features of the the model that your mouse is over um, to select, which is pretty nice. Um, but in this case, I just need to select um, this this face right there to project and that's represented by the yellow geometry. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw over it with a or use it as a reference but draw over it with this, just a rectangular tool here. Give it a dimension. And then I'll hit E for extrude. And we want to make it the thickness of our sheet metal part. Um, so when we do create, uh, turn this into sheet metal, it will detect it and treat it as such. So it's going to be 0.12 inches in this case. So we we went ahead and created the the component uh, that's going to be combined later, but that that's uh, sitting on this component number one or two here. And then the next part will be created on this face here. So we'll go ahead and start another sketch. Project geometry. Create another piece of sheet metal. E for extrude and then 0.12 inches again. I'll hide my work plane. So now we can go about connecting these two parts to become one sheet metal part because that's what I'm tasked to do. Um, we can go, people might think, oh, I'll just create a flange and head down that way, uh, create, you know, uh, another flange over there and then connect the two uh, at the end. Um, or if you're already familiar with the tool, we're going to use the bend command to do this all in one. Um, but first, of course, we're going to have to go to convert this into a sheet metal part. And now we have access to our sheet metal tools, including that bend tool that I was referring to. And this will probably give us the quickest and cleanest results. So I'll, I'll go ahead and select the two edges that I want to connect together. Um, and it actually already created this um, preview for us. Uh, if, if it was started off like this, then this might be something uh, that intersects with something that you that already exists here. So you can you have the option to to start the bend uh, outer outside of the of the model there. So now you have this this uh, solution that that inventor has created for you. We can go ahead and apply that, and we have our sheet metal part that was created uh, referencing what we already had and having inventor do the 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 heavy lifting for you by using the bend command there all right easy enough to warm up uh we'll go ahead and head into our second example here which is the joggle and again the joggle is the the 
V formation or the little twist that allows this one of these planes to slide under the other while still being close enough to be spot welded or uh, bolted or bolts and nuts uh, together. So we can connect them uh, via that way as well. Um, so first to start off with, uh, people might think, oh, I'm gonna create a flange that goes, you know, maybe 45 degrees down and then another 45 degrees to go under it. Um, what we'd actually recommend in this case is using the contour flange tool in conjunction with a, a skeletal, a skeletal um, sketch. So we'll go ahead and create that sketch. So I'll go over to the side here. I'll create the sketch on this face here. And then I'll start with my line to represent the, the joggle. So I'll start at the bottom, go across half an inch. I'll go down, let's see, 135. And then I'll just go out a ridiculous amount for now, because uh, then I'll create my other line here at about half an inch, which I will dimension between uh, from that line to this line. And I'll make that my sheet metal thickness, because I want it to go under a full sheet metal thickness amount, so 0.12. But then I'm also going to add the tolerance or the a little gap, a slight little gap between the two of one thousandth of an inch. So I have point, or, uh, point zero zero one, so point one two one uh, to that there. And let me just go ahead and drag that back so I could be connected there. Use the trim command. The fun part about the trim command is you just click and hold and then just draw a line to cut it uh, wherever you're trimming from. And then lastly, I'm just going to get rid of this extra line that was created when I was hovering over there. So now we have our the skeletal sketch of our juggle and our, you know, soon to be juggle. <laughs> um, so now we can use this uh, as a reference for our contour flange. So we have the option to offset it um, at a higher level here. So it, it kind of connects with the existing geometry. Offset it in that direction so it actually makes sense. And then we will use the join command uh, to connect it with what it already um, is connecting to. And now we have our juggle. And to bring this guy over uh, on the right side here, we can use a 3D modeling tool. Um, first, let me go ahead and you know, project, project this geometry. So I have something to extrude here. And then hit, hitting E for extrude allows me to tell it how far I want to extrude this. And I want to do uh, extrude it to that particular point there, because that point is the beginning point of where it starts to curve. And that's where I don't want it to come uh, lap over but I do want it to lap over where it's nice and flat over here. All right, so we're almost done here. The last thing I wanna create is just some reference holes. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start a sketch at the, not reference holes, we'll, we'll create some uh, through holes for the nuts and bolts. Uh, so I'll start a sketch on the top here, again with our favorite project tool, not, not projecting that actually, I wanna project that down below there. Create some lines to go right through it. Make it a construction line just out of formality. Um, create some points for the references for the holes. And then I'll give it a dimension from the edges here, maybe half an inch. And another half inch. And now when I hit H for hole, it's going to automatically pick up these two positions um, because these are points uh, and inventors smart enough to realize, hey, these points are probably gonna be used for the next tool that this person chose, which is the hole tool. 
and we can choose for it to cut to uh, that surface there and you see the uh, representation. And now we have holes going through uh, our joggle here. So now we have a completed um, solution there, or at least our, our workflow and approach to it. All right, so that's number two. If you have any questions, feel free, or any workflows of your own that you want to share, feel free to leave that in the chat window. Number three is going to get even more fun, compounded angles for flanges. For flanges. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new part. And we'll create a sketch on this plane. And the first part of my um of my example is going to be just a straight 90 degree angle with another zero degree angle and then this this uh line here will be angled at let's do 115 degrees oops there you go 115 degrees all right Hit E for extrude. Since we don't have a profile, it's going to extrude the um, the line, which means we will have a surface um, that we'll be working with. And it is a little hard to see, so what I like to do is right-click on the surface and make it not translucent. So we have our first angle there. To make the second angle, what we can do is go to our plane angle to plane around edge and then we can create an angle at about let's do 110 uh yeah 10 degrees so 115 and 110 and then we can extend these surfaces here to that plane. So now we have an angle going on in this axis. I'll hide my work plane. Now we have an angle going this way for 115. We have an angle going that way for 110. Compounded angles. All right. Next thing before we hop into the sheet metal environment is we're going to use the thicken command to thicken our surfaces here. So we'll go ahead and select one, two, and three. And then I'll make sure it's going out. And it did kind of try to repair itself or, or overlap itself there, not like the preview, um, but we can use the bend command to, to kind of resolve that afterwards here. So we have, uh, let me just make sure I think in that I did not uh, my thickness for my sheet metal rules is 0 0.12, so I'm going to make sure that's 0 0.12 as well, or it's not going to bend properly. All right. Then we're going to go into our environments, convert this to sheet metal. Now we can use our bend tools to resolve these corners. All right. Now for the flange part, the compounded angle part. So we'll start on the, the, the 90 degree sides first because those are uh, easier. So we can select an edge here after hitting flange. Uh, it's at 90 degrees and we want it to bend inwards. So that's about it for that one. That one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the one going in from the top here, if we use our flange tool, is actually not going to be 90. It's going to be the um, the value that we had earlier, 180, and then minus the value that I had earlier. I think it was 110. And making sure they they are offsetted properly. Oh. Um, I want to make sure that they aren't intersecting right away. So what I want to do with that 
is go down here to this extra, these extra arrows here. So my width extent will go to just to whatever I specify here. I'll make it small for now because I will, uh, it will uh, repair itself or increase in size once I use the, the corner seam tool later down the line. So I'll just leave, go ahead and leave it like that. So now we have that tiny little um, flange there. All right. And then lastly, the, tr the compounded angle side here, this guy for the flange tool, um, it's not going to be this value here. What we're going to do first is set it to zero. And that's just going to have it go straight out and be fluid with that face there. The reason for this is because we need to be able to measure the angle between this face here and this face here because they're two separate angles at the same time. So under inspect measure, before we, we click these faces, we want to turn on the precision to all decimals because it's going to be a bizarre value. We're going to go ahead and click on that face there and that face there. And then we're going to take this value here and put that into our flange. Now, let me see that again, because that value looked a little off to me. Let me do that one more time with the, let me change this back to zero, because this is not what I'd expect it to look like. Measure, angle precision, that face to that face. Interesting enough. Let's try it out for size again. Paste that in. Oh, someone's mentioning 180 minus that value. That might be a good idea. That might, that might save me there. So let's see if that's going to help out here. I'm going to first, let me, let me get this guy out of the way. Corner seam. I'm going to connect these two edges here. That one worked. All right. So it turns out when we go to create the, the corner seam between this flange and the top flange here, it's, it is the same. It is parallel. They do have the same angle uh, after you're doing that measuring tool. However, there's this little gap right here, which means it's not on the same plane, which Inventor does not like uh, when creating this uh, corner seam. So what we can do instead, I'm going to go ahead and get, just get rid of these. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a plane that's on those two uh, edges there. And now I will go ahead and start a sketch, create a little rectangle to represent some faces on each one of these here. And just to make sure that it's going to be parallel with that right there. Then we can go ahead and create our faces for each one of these. And now we can go ahead and apply bends for these. Go ahead and hide my work plane. And then we can use the corner seam tool to connect them at the corner for these compounded angles. Now we can see it's pretty lined up pretty evenly there. So that's how you can go about doing that. So next, 
um, we'll be diving into the reverse engineering of a 3D solid. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, our customer is getting a file that looks very similar to this actually. And they're saying, hey, model this uh, in sheet metal for us. And our, our guy's scratching his head and saying, okay, well, where, where do I start? Um, one workflow that we found that can be useful uh, for this user is to, and I'll just dive right into it, is to create services out of it and then um, then taking those services, thickening them, and then using that as a sheet metal part. And I'll show you here in just a moment. So first, what we're going to do is create some fillet. So F for fillet. Select everything here, and then we are going to go ahead and deselect maybe parts of the bottom here because we want to ultimately get rid of this bottom face because it's going to be a sheet metal uh, design uh, to make it hollowed out for the surface. And then I'm going to actually deselect some on the inner side here, and then I'll give this a radius of 0.12. And apply. And the other fillets I'm going to create is going to be um, on this one here. They would have a different radius. And then I'll create a fillet here. And this one I'll make a little bit smaller. This fillet will be representative of the of maybe like uh, the, the small gap that you would want to have between your sheet metal parts, and it'll make sense. Uh, in a bit here, um, but just notice that you can control your control the the size of the fillets, which may affect um, the way your sheet metal part is laid out uh, later down the line here. So go ahead and hit apply for that. And now that I have my solid, I'll go ahead and uh, save the model. I'll create a new part, and I'm going to derive by bringing that model in. And I'll bring it in as a surface. So back to the surfaces again. All right, and it's a little hard to see again. So I'll go ahead and make it non-translucent. All right, so next we can go ahead and select everything here. And what we're going to do is we are going to delete the faces, but since we don't want to delete every face, we want to keep these major faces here. I'm not sure if I selected that already. There we go. I don't want to keep any of the fillets because that's going to give us that gap that we want to use for our sheet metal part. And I don't want to keep that bottom face. So guess what we can do next with this? We can thicken them. And of course, we want to make it the sheet metal thickness. I'll thicken that first part there. And then go around thickening each um, surface here. And this guy on that side. And then this one over here. So the neat thing about this now, if I had my surfaces, we have parts that well, we can connect via sheet metal and it is represent, uh, representative of the, the surfaces that we had in that solid. And it was done fairly quickly um, with that derived uh, functionality. So now if we go and first I got to create this, uh, turn this into a sheet metal part. And then I can use my bend tool with the sheet metal rules and start creating these bends. So bend that corner there. 
bend that corner there, bend the inner part of that corner there. bend these sides there and I won't bend this because this maybe we can weld together or just leave it as is so it can um, kind of close off that surface um, but we won't because it already has the bend over here so we are good on that so it depends on the scenario or how you want your sheet metal part created uh, and what tools you have in the shop so I'll bend that over there and yeah, we can do something like that. So just to give you an idea of the approach and how you can later uh, use sheet metal uh, tools to to kind of clean it up, um, the, the better, um, the issue with what they were doing before uh, was shelling the 3D model. And then after you shell it, there was a lot of direct edit modeling that had to be done. Um, the, the, the thicknesses weren't perfect either. Uh, so it's better to have these kind of surfaces to begin with um, that were evenly spread apart via the fillets, and then they were able to go ahead and connect, or now they are able to go ahead and connect them together like I'm doing here later down the line. So if you are, are running into that kind of scenario with reverse engineering a 3D solid for sheet metal, this, this would be the solution for you. All right. So that's the fourth example. That's about it. I did want to fix that <laughs> compounded angle part. Um, so now I guess we can open it up for questions if they are there are any here. Yeah, Tony's saying that I can't get a, a flat pattern from this. Yeah, th the way I'm I'm bending that it's a, it's a little uh, over. <laughs> There's a lot of bends in there, but but the I, the whole idea was to kind of get to a good a better position than shelling it to begin with. Um, and then if you're more familiar with with the actual unfolding and uh, flattening of of this part, then uh, you you'd be better off creating it uh, a different way. Uh, Paul's asking, is there an ability to have twists uh, to the sheet metal faces be purely planar, or is it only achieved by created, creating a solid and shelling? Um, sheet metal faces. I can answer that for you, Brian. Sure. Yeah, so that's been a limitation in the application. Um, if you want Autodesk to know what things you guys wanted to change in the application, the best way to do that is to join the beta program and also get on Inventor Ideas, right? If enough people request a change in the application or request an improvement in a certain aspect of the application and that gets a lot of traction on like the message boards and such, Autodesk will certainly look into doing that. Um, right now, they're focusing on the things that are getting the most traction. So if you have an idea and you want it to get put in the application, go ahead and add it to Inventor Ideas. It's the best way to do that. Um, and yeah, like, like Brian had said, right, the way that this is modeled right now, right, there's no way to make that out of a flat sheet, right? Just like based on how this looks right now, right? You cannot actually create this out of a flat sheet. But the whole concept of us showing how to do this was that, if you have a solid model, right, and you want to generate a flat pattern from it, um, one way to do that is to use services. And then you just use your logistical mind to be like, yes, I, this is a quote unquote feasible way to unfold this or a feasible way to bend this um, in those situations. So um, absolutely. Yes, yeah, to get, get us in the right direction uh, per se. Yep. Uh, rather than just being stuck with, oh, I only have a bend command or I only have a flange tool or I only have a shell command, um, you can actually use surfaces and then head down that path. Yep, and you're in a better spot than if you just had the 3D model of the solid, which is ultimately what you want, so. Yeah. Um, and I do see 
uh, Michael, that there, you want to talk about total loop length. I definitely want, I know we, we talked about that uh, in person or uh, uh, privately about, about uh, showing that. Uh, definitely want to show that maybe on the next sheet metal uh, auto, uh, AVA. Um, same with um, Michael, there, or the other, another Michael <laughs> showing uh, relief options. Uh, we can show that in, in another ABA definitely as well. So we'll definitely be taking this, these under into consideration. And just like the one we did today, uh, where we took uh, our customers' uh, ideas and questions into consideration for to show you guys. Hopefully, you guys are running running to similar issues, so you can kind of benefit from each other, uh, from each other's the issues that you were running into. Uh, so then we can all help each other as a community to to get better and to come, oh, overcome these obstacles. Yep. Is there anything you wanna you wanna add before we just make a couple of announcements, Brian? And answer uh, any nope, of these questions. I, uh, nope. I that's that's all I had for today. Um, maybe I can fiddle around with that compound angle a little bit more. That's the only thing that's bothering me. But uh, no worries. Other than that, other than that, you can get to uh, get to what you need to get to. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Um, just an FYI, before we jump into the rest of these questions, and there are some that we still want to go ahead and address here. Um, I had mentioned already, you know, like getting into Inventor Beta and getting into Inventor Ideas. Um, if you just Google beta.autodesk.com, um, you can get into the beta. And some of the changes they made in Sheet Metal a couple of years ago, right, the people in the beta might have seen that many months before everyone else. Um, and in that case, right, we're able to give their input on how they want the application to change. So there's a lot of people mentioning like, hey, I want Inventor to do this. I want Sheet Metal to do this. Why is there this limitation? Um, or why is there, you know, this perceived workflow that I can't do it in this quote unquote logistical way, right? You're thinking about it. Um, the best way to make your voice heard is to reach out um, and get into those beta programs and kind of uh, help influence where the application moves in the future, right? Because Autodesk is changing the application in the perspective of like the like what the users are saying. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. People are always asking, hey, is this being recorded? Um, it is being recorded right now. So hello, future self. Um, it's going to get edited and then placed on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the webinar is completed. So it just has to, um, to change. So. Yep, and Michael's saying they're not taking beta testers right now. I don't think that's the case. I think you can always sign up for the beta program. I would, if you're having a hard time signing up, let one of us know. Um, I know the people in charge on that side, and they should be able to help us get you in there. Let me take a look at the rest of these. Answered that. Answered that. Okay. Um, so next week's AVA, we're going to be going over um, the next couple. We're going to be going over some inventor automation. So I know that's a hot topic for a lot of people. So uh, stay tuned next week. We're going to start getting into Visual Studio and the Inventor API next week with Philip. Um, and then the week after that, we're going to do some automated assembly generation um, using iLogic. So for those of you who want to automate your processes, kind of automate the design process. Um, if you are building, you know, similarly, similarly created assemblies, they're just slightly different in, you know, some aspects, whether some of the parameters are different um, or however, that may be uh, definitely stay tuned for those because those are going to be really useful um, for you to either get started using the API and some of the VBA, uh, the VBA in Inventor um, and then kind of taking that one step further and starting to generate assemblies from that. Um, I'll give everyone another 30 seconds or so to answer or ask any questions that they do have, but that's all that I had. So um, while we're waiting for those questions, definitely let us know if there's something you want to see in the future, like we mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, right, is that these topics are coming from suggestions from the community, right? And if we hear the same suggestion over and over again, that triggers us to that doesn't trigger us. It triggers us, or it triggers a process in which we get that done. Um, and we do that in the future and schedule it out, right? It's not personal.
personally triggering me. But uh, <laughs> regardless of that, so definitely make it known. There's surveys that go out after um, these webinars. Um, also, we send emails to you all every week to remind you what the webinars are. Feel free to respond to those in any way, shape, or form. If you have a support question, go ahead and respond to that as well if you don't uh, know how to get to our regular support lines um, and whatnot. So it looks like that's it for questions. Uh, so first off, um, Brian, I'd just like to thank you for uh, jumping on today and doing this webinar. I know it's something that uh, you've been working with some customers on, and so it makes some sense for you to jump on today. Uh, I'm excited to see what we do in the future in regards to sheet metal. It looks like we got some suggestions in the webinar today. So cool, again, yeah. thanks everybody. Um, and thanks, Brian. We'll talk to you all soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Hope this was helpful. Take mm -hmm. care, guys. Bye-bye.